Hi there folks, Joel Self, Outdoor Instructor here, and we've come inside today. It's a little bit miserable outside, it's been raining, and it's now a bit damp and horrible. Today we're going to be going through some questions you all sent in, and these are all questions about my time as a trainee instructor at Pioneer, which was run by AC UK. So I grabbed out my old uniform, which I stole from them, don't let them know. Um, so yeah, we're going to go through those questions, but rather than me having my sheet of paper like I did before and reading them, the question and the answer to you. We're going to do it as a little bit of an interview style. So behind the camera is my granddad, who's going to read the questions for us. We'll get straight into it. And the first question comes from Tim, and he asks, how old were you when you started your year at Pioneer? I had just turned 18. So on the screen just here, you'll see a baby-faced picture of me. Um, I turned 18 on the 4th of December, and I believe we started at the centre on the 4th or the 5th of January. So I applied for the role halfway through being 17 and started just after my 18th birthday. And Lily asks, were you the only trainee at the centre? No, nope, there were 16 to 18 of us, I can't remember off the top of my head. But by the time we came to the end of our traineeship, there were actually the next lot of trainees coming in, as well as obviously having all the other members of staff it takes to run a centre. Sam asks, what was the first activity you learnt to teach, to instruct? First activity that I started instructing at the centre was high ropes. It didn't require any external qualification. So we did some in-house training. And this was after quite an extensive amount of in-house training, if I'm honest. But the, the session was fairly straightforward. So it's one that a lot of us got passed off on fairly early on in our time at the centre. Bella asks, what training and qualifications were actually provided? We had to do a first aid course and a safeguarding course. Those were, yeah, sort of mandatory. However, we then had a training budget, which I believe was £200. Ignore me, turns out it was 150 But we could use that to get ourselves NGB awards. So the centre were very supportive of us doing training and assessment for national qualifications. And they organised for us to do some of those as well. But... Uh, yeah, I did a I did my climbing wall award whilst I was at the centre, both training and the assessment for that. And I had the funds there from the centre, and I could also add to that with my own money so that I could get as many qualifications as I felt I needed. So really, whatever area you wanted to specialise in, the centre were then supportive of that. Scott has a question about finances. Were you paid during your training, or did you pay to take part in the year? Paid might be too strong a word. We received £200 a month, um, that was it, for all the work we did. But we also got our food and accommodation provided as part of that arrangement. And as I mentioned, we had a training budget, so that kind of all needs to be taken into account. We did have to pay for some of the courses and qualifications ourselves or contribute towards them. But, you know, you could go throughout the whole year without spending any money on those things. I just feel like it would have been a bit of a wasted opportunity if you did that though. Nella asks, is centre life hard in terms of a social and work balance? It certainly can be. You're living and working with all your friends, who again, you're going to see on the screen here. But we, yeah, because you're living at the centre, all of your conversation is regarding work. You can't really get away from it. And we didn't have the opportunity to get out to a local town or a local city to interact with other people. We really were at that centre all the time and with the people from the centre all the time. So there wasn't much opportunity to keep a social group outside of those you worked with. Matty asks, what was your biggest achievement during the year and your worst low? Biggest achievement for me was getting passed off in-house to do archery sessions, which sounds a bit odd because I was really good at archery personally. I've since gone on to become qualified as an archery coach and I now coach and instruct archery fairly regularly. But at the time I was really struggling with the in-house assessments to keep my sessions to the, the time period we were sort of expected to. And I wouldn't get people through enough goes with the, with the archery. It just yeah wasn't a smooth session. And so it meant that I struggled and I think I did four or five assessments before I finally got passed off. But it meant that when I did get passed off to run that session, I was so pleased about it. That was a really brilliant moment. And the worst experience 
Well, I fell from the top of a bouldering wall during some personal climbing with friends from the centre and I damaged my ankle quite significantly. It's actually affected me until now. I'm still struggling with it and if I go on long walks, it can cause me some problems. But at the time, it forced me into being in a wheelchair, but it made me miss out on things that I would love to have been doing. Uh, there were qualifications I couldn't take part in because of it and there were also experiences and sessions that I couldn't run uh, and couldn't take part in because I was in that wheelchair. But it did give me a really interesting insight into what life would be like living in a wheelchair and you know dealing with that for around two three months I think it was I was in there it yeah definitely a, an interesting experience to have had. Alexia asks how many qualifications did you complete during the year? I took part in at least five or six different national qualifications as well as some in-house ones. Uh, I did things like my climbing wall award, um, I did archery coaching qualification as well as fencing qualification. Uh, so there was opportunity to do lots of different things. I don't really do much in terms of water sports, for example. So there was the opportunity to do a lifeguarding course. I opted not to do that, but there were plenty of people at the center who chose to go and do that course. So depending on what area you want to focus on, there's definitely opportunities provided to you to get involved with different qualifications and different courses through the year. Sharon is asking, what's your best memory from the year? Best memory from the year is probably when we were all heading off to Harlech in Wales for a couple of days of outdoor activities. We were going to go do some gorge walking and some climbing, things of that nature. But me and a couple of friends decided that we were going to go two days early and we caught the train, I can't remember how many miles south, but a fair few south of Harlech. And over those next two days, we walked on as close as we could a bearing of due north straight up to Harlech along the coast which had you know some really brilliant elements to it really lovely scenery all the time nice hot weather and yeah, it was a great adventure. Neil asks what's the best qualifications for a budding instructor? It's a little bit of a difficult question that one because it depends what gets you excited if you're really into your water sports and I say oh go get qualified in snowboarding then you're going to say, well, I don't really want to, and you go do it, and you're going to be a terrible snowboarding instructor or skiing instructor. It's just not going to work out for you. Go and get qualified in things that interest you and excite you and things you take part in personally. For example, I really love climbing, and so I went and got qualified as a climbing instructor. I've since then progressed that with rope access qualifications and, and all sorts of other things as well to build upon those. So, yeah, just do stuff that excites you and interests you. A quick side note though. Centres will like you to be qualified in climbing, archery and at least one water sports. That's a general rule. B asks, did the year genuinely set you up well to start a career in the outdoor industry? The year definitely did set me up well um, to go into the industry. I know that not everyone I trained with continued in the outdoors. Some were just treating it as a sort of gap year opportunity, which is absolutely a valid reason to go and do it. But I had a real strong focus that I wanted to make a career out of working in the outdoors and I therefore took and took part in as many qualifications as I could, took every opportunity for training that I could and so the year worked really well for me, it had a lot of benefits. And Nelson would like to know if you think there are any good alternatives to trainee schemes, maybe university? Well, a bit like the previous question, this kind of depends on who you are, but I certainly wouldn't have belonged in a university setting and I think if you're going to go to a university you've got to be really sure that they're going to give you some some really solid uh, time in centres, some national qualifications and some experience with clients because if you miss out on all those things you're going to have gone through your university degree and then you're still going to have to go into a trainee scheme afterwards to pick up on all those different areas and get qualified in those specific sports. Um, and if you haven't got that client experience, so you're not used to running sessions, then you're going to need to get that from somewhere as well. So just check out those other alternatives and make sure that they really are going to suit the journey you want to go on. Mandolin is asking if you've needed to continue training since finishing the year. Have absolutely carried on training, yep. Yeah. You go through a whole load of personal training. So, you know, if I'm a very keen climber, you have to keep on top of that. You have to keep climbing all the time. 
as well as you know progressing into other areas in my personal outdoor activities so I've started doing things like tree climbing which I never used to do but I've also gone and got qualified in lots of different activities since then as well so tree climbing is something I've become qualified in I've also done various rope access qualifications and yeah set myself up to run more than just those initial uh, activities that I became set up with. And Peter is asking what was your most favourite activities to run? Ooh, probably abseiling because actually instructing an abseil session is fairly straightforward. There's not too much to it. You go and make yourself secure at the top of the climbing tower, the client comes up to you and normally they're a really tiny little kid, really excited and then they look over the edge and they get really scared. And so it's a super rewarding session to run because you take this very, very excited but very scared child and get them to a position and a, a, a space in their head where they're comfortable lowering themselves off of the side of this climbing tower. And that is just, yeah, super, super rewarding. And they're so pleased after they've done it. I think it's one of the activities that probably has the biggest impact on young children but it can be such a, a mental battle for them to, to actually do it. So that is a great, great session to run. And the final question comes from Chris and he asks, would you recommend trainee schemes to other budding instructors? Absolutely, yeah. I think trainee schemes, maybe they don't, they're not all a year, that's for sure. There are some places that offer one or three month trainee schemes and there are some that offer two year or four year schemes. You need to find something that's gonna suit the journey you wanna go on and something that's going to provide you importantly with the client experiences and the qualifications that you're going to need to progress your career so if you can find somewhere like that in a trainee scheme brilliant go and seize that opportunity it will be one of the best things you've done for now though that's the end of the video we've gone through all those questions if you've got questions for a future video or ideas of different things you'd like to see from me then do drop me an email, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to try and get that video sent out online for you. For now though, from me, goodbye and thank you for watching.